Hey guys, Jared Kraus, and you've probably heard of Flipper because they've been around for quite a while now, and you probably may have heard of Exchange Marketplace, which is their rival, and you've probably seen, read, or heard about people going away and buying websites from Flipper and getting scammed, and I do not want that to happen to you at all. So in this video, I'm going to lay out buying Flipper websites by versus buying Shopify Exchange websites so you can know which one is better to buy from. But the best advice on how to go away and buy websites and online businesses that are already past that 90% failure rate that all startups have and already have a proven track record that, make, that are making money every single month, go away and hit the subscribe button. Also hit the bell notification so you can be notified when I upload new videos about this every single week. So first and foremost, are there any decent websites on Flipper? Are they all, are they all scams? And then Exchange Marketplace, what is this all about and how does it actually work? So I want to show you how to navigate these websites so you can understand what they actually are, so you can learn your, you know, learn how to go away and buy websites and not get scammed. In the comments below, if you've been to Flipper or have gone around and looked at websites on Flipper or you know even know Exchange Marketplace, which I'm going to share with you know now, I want you to comment below your experience with Flipper or even Exchange Marketplace and let me know, did you like this type of website or not? So as you can see, you can go through and check out all these different types of websites for sale. I'll tell you what type of they are. And I found a couple that I'm going to click on and show you a little bit more info on. So the first one here is the uh, uh, madeintheshadeshammocks.com. And as you can see, it's it shows you a little bit, or well, they just punch in these details here. Uh, Lindy, um, smart, who kind of sus sort of name, but um, she just punches in her details and tells you what the expenses are and what they're making and stuff. But there's no verification. There's actually no verification, like there's no screenshots further down or any sort of like uh, proof of that. Um, she's making that proof of the income, proof of the expenses. Um, and proof of the work and the task done. And my other thing that makes me quite skeptical about this is that, as you can see, people can come in onto Flipper, look at all these different types of websites, and find out you know how this business is running. So you can see, okay, it's an easy dropship business, obviously from the states, so they they can go away and use wholesalers and find wholesalers in the states. And somebody can come along and just look at all these different types of websites on Flipper, see what's working, see what's making money, and replicate that. And you can go away and buy a business like this, and in three months or so, everybody's your competition, which really waters down the market, right? So that's, what's, that's what, like, makes me quite sus. And she doesn't give you too much info, you know, um, assets, all site content, customer database, right? She doesn't really give you a good amount of info, right? So... It's easy for a seller to just put up anything and sort of sell anything, really. But let me look at another one. I'll show you this OctoberfestCostumes.com.au. So this is obviously an Australian site, and it was founded in 2018, and it's making about $6,500 uh, gross profit per month. But because it was created in 2018, somebody could come along and go, wow, this was only created last year which is only like two months ago as of recording this and you're watching this video, I'm not, not sure when, but, you know, this could have been, this could have been created only like six months ago and they're already making a whole bunch of money, which means somebody could come along and go, wow, what's this business I might start and replicate and become a competition, yeah, and make a little bit of money. So obviously, you know, they see it's a Aussie-based e-commerce site, used to drop ship. So they can just jump in and find dropship supplies or wholesale supplies, supplies within Australia for, you know, Oktoberfest costumes, which wouldn't be too hard, and start doing some a bit of marketing and start making a bit of money and then you've got competition here. So that's what that's what sketches me out, and then there's no proof that this guy is is sort of making that sort of income, right? Another thing is that on these sites, and you can see that he's giving you a fair bit of info here, it's awesome, but where's the proof of that? You know, we should be able to get proof of that. Right? And then with this, he, there's no post-sale support. So with my clients, what we do is we make sure that the, the buyer gives them support and training so they can understand the business. 
Um, this guy looks like he's, you know, 14 years in digital marketing and stuff like that. Looks like he knows what he's doing. However, you know, he's just created this business over a couple of months, built it up for something he wants to flip it because, you know, he knows it might not last so long. So this is not really evergreen type business because everybody can go away and become in competition. That's what sus makes me feel a little bit sus about Flipper is that everybody can come and rip off these businesses and become competition and um, it makes it really, really hard. Whereas with website brokers, everything's quite private. You even need to see, sign an um, NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement, and an NCA, which is a non-compete agreement. If you do go, you get them to um, sign that so they can't compete with you. The seller, that is, after you buy the uh, business. So this is flip up. And that's what happens in these uh, marketplaces where everybody can come in and suss out all these different types of businesses. And I'm not to say that on flip up that they um, there can be some private listings because they can, and normally they're more valuable. And that's what I would stick to if you were going to use flipper. Although you know my reason for using brokers are because they have they want to keep a good reputation. Right? So this is a different one. This is ExchangeMarketplace.com. Okay, ExchangeMarketplace.com. And they sell Shopify stores, right? Shopify stores, and they basically pull the information from the Shopify store from somebody who just wants to sell it. So I've clicked on a couple of different ones, and they give you a little bit of the info. I've clicked on a couple of different ones, and they um, you can click on view listing. So the first one that I clicked on was uh, this one over here, which is Solid Charms. So it wants to load up. And what Solar Charms does is they they're selling. What have we got here? We'll go all the way up the top. So making you know seven eight hundred dollars revenue per month, and you can just click on and check out the website. And what happens when you do check out the website? Say somebody wanted to come and rip this off, they can click on the website, get go to SolarCharms.com, and Go to somewhere like AH, Ahrefs or STM Rush and find out who the actual audience is, and find out how many like you know visitors they're getting per month and stuff like that, and kind of go away and target ads and create a new business and just target ads straight to that audience. They know exactly who to target and who's buying the products and who's walking up the sites like this. So it's really, really simple and easy to replicate these. On top of that, especially like Flipper, they got no proof. And I've heard that a lot of people go online and bought businesses and they aren't actually making these sorts of returns. Because you've got a little bit of a chart here. Uh, where was it? you got a little bit of a chart here of revenue and stuff like that. But like, where's, where's the proof? We really, really need the proof, right? Traffic stats and all that sort of stuff. Now, if I was going to rip this business off, let me just scroll back up to the top. And it's a, it's a website using, here we go. I decided to start this site, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's the reason they're selling it. But what's involved, right, in this business? All products are imported from a Burlo. So a Burlo is a tool that, you know, matches up with Shopify and Alibaba. And they just, you can just straight automatically put those products using Alberto from Alibaba straight onto your website and sell them, which means anybody can go away and start this up tomorrow and become a competition. Check out what their Google ads are and they can say, oh, cool, $5 a day, that's not much in advertising, you still make a good return, make 700 bucks a month. So, and then you do have private listing like this, which people aren't able to rip off. But the crazy thing is they're not really vetted. With marketplaces like this, these businesses aren't really vetted before they got put up. So they can tell you how much they're making and that sort of stuff, but there's no real proof. As opposed to with a broker, they give you screenshots and you access to everything that you need and you can go away and make a really, really good decision. And with that, right, marketplaces like this, they don't take responsibility if somebody buys a business and it's not what it says they are because people are supposed to do their research and due diligence. However, however, because they sell so many, they get such a high volume for people to go away and you know, uh, buy it and sell from this as opposed to a really good broker. They don't sell as many businesses, a broker that is, but they only sell good businesses 
because they want to keep their reputation, which is why I like to go to brokers because they're really, really good at what they do. So there you go. That's what you need to know about buying flipper websites versus buying ex websites from Shopify Exchange. However, which one actually is best? And in my opinion, if I was stuck and I really, really had to choose one of these, I'd probably be leaning more towards Shopify Exchange because with those websites from Shopify is from the seller, you can go away and get access to their Shopify account and go away and verify all the earnings and the, the income and everything like that and verify a whole lot of things. And there's a lot more proof behind it in my opinion. However, Flipper does have some really other good tools that you can use and get in contact with the seller and get those tools from the seller to verify websites as well. Although I found Shopify Exchange has a very, very, very good range of websites for sale in a price range that I reckon starters should be buying at. So people who are starting buying websites for passive income, I believe that's a good price range at Shopify Exchange. But because I can have it my way, I don't prefer using either Flipper or Shopify Exchange. What I do prefer is I prefer to use website brokers. And I like to use website brokers because they go away and verify businesses before they put them up for sale and they have a reputation to uphold as well and they help the, not just the seller but the buyer as well make the transaction happen. It runs really, really smooth and I find the businesses on website brokers are far superior to those ones on marketplaces. So if you want to go away and learn more about website brokers, click in the description. There should be a link around here somewhere to go away and find out my two favorite website brokers. Now guys, I hope you got a lot of value from this. If you did, please comment below helpful. And if you have any questions, comment those below. And I look forward to speaking to you guys soon.